My name is Ken Lane. I'm an API evangelist. Uh, I don't evangelize any particular API. Uh, my role is to uh, evangelize APIs in general to non-developers, hopefully, and get business leaders to uh, understand the, the power and importance of APIs and uh, hopefully grow the industry. And that's why I'm here in France today. So today I'm going to talk about the secret to a successful API's internal. So open APIs have really been dominating the conversation. So we hear a lot about you know, eBay, Facebook, Flickr, Netflix, Twitter, and all the, the popular open APIs. And they're the ones who've gotten a lot of success, and we owe a lot to them uh, for where we are. And, wow, interesting. <laughs> different layout on this monitor, apologize. But basically, we owe, we owe a lot to these guys. It was necessary to get us to where we're at. You know, they brought a lot of awareness to the, to the approach of web APIs. They, you know, really changed SOA and made it much more open and kind of changed the core of SOA. A lot of what made service-oriented architecture, web services, SOAP, whatever you want to call that approach, Oh, web APIs and the open API movement have really kind of changed that culture a little bit. So it was really necessary. And it really made APIs about developers and not about just the enterprise and just about uh, a top-down approach. It was a real bottom-up, developer-centric approach to programming applications using APIs. And really, open APIs made it about delivering value and not just technology, actually truly solving problems and building cool stuff. So why were web APIs successful? It's because they're simple, they're hackable, they're built on HTTP, self-service, frictionless. I mean, you could get up, you, you could start using the Twitter API any time of day. You, you could sign up and you could start building something cool. You didn't need approval, you didn't need procurement, you didn't need IT to get involved. And they're distributed. And again, developer focused. I can't emphasize that enough. A open APIs and web APIs are about developers. So it's easy to get caught up in all this hype around open. Everyone who wants to know about APIs wants to know, you know, they compare it to Twitter, they compare it to all these open API movements. Their competition's doing it. They see the success of Twitter, Amazon, Twilio, all the names that you know. So it's really easy to get caught up in this whole thing. And it's the story that we've been telling, I've been telling it, I've been telling it for the last four years, two years exclusively, just talking about open APIs, open APIs. So it's easy to get caught up in all of this. But su successful APIs, in my opinion, whether they're open, whether they're partner, all begin internally. And not just with internal APIs, but perspective. So a APIs be begin internally with passionate technologists who understand APIs, thought leaders and executives who see the coming API economy, small initiatives and little successes internally, and getting buy-in from all departments, not just an IT or developer initiative. You got to have marketing, business, all the other departments involved. So do these, do these you know, passionate technologists exist in your company? Do the executives see it the way that you see it? If not, you're going to need to cultivate it, and it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of work. So all APIs start internally, even the public ones. They start by taking inventory of business assets, identifying content, data, and other resources that are important to your organization, other assets that you feel your partners could use and could be exposed publicly. So this process, I feel, is one of the most important pieces of, of the API process is going through and identifying all of this content and data that exists in your organization. The next step of that that I feel is really healthy is identifying the relationships around all of these assets. Who should have access? How should they interact? Who the owners are? What are the licensing and royalties? One of the, the, the things that you know, companies get scared about is when they start exposing APIs, who owns this content? Where is it licensed? I think a lot of companies haven't been tracking on this, so they get really scared when they start opening up. They're worried about getting sued. So really understanding the owners and, and, and the relationships around this content is important. And what are the business rules? 
It's like, what are the rules for putting this stuff out there? Uh, there's another image off, in a way. So APIs keep things secure while allowing for frictionless access. They facilitate interoperability. They encourage collaboration. They cross organizational boundaries. And they're about being open, but in a co controlled way, which I know a lot of companies like. I'm open by default, but I know a lot of companies are much, much more cautious about it. APIs <sighs> decouple resources. They allow them to be managed independently of each other and thought of independently, consumed independently, and it allows for easier migration, faster scaling, and independent re reuse. So when you're going through and defining content and data, th these, they may have a lot of interconnectedness now and in how they're currently being implemented, but APIs allow you to think of them independently, break them up into smaller bite-sized chunks, and hopefully allow you to, to reuse them and think differently about how, how you're going to sell these. APIs facilitate rapid product cycles, smaller products, incremental releases, granular ownership, flexible reuse, independent life cycles. So you can really do a lot more. You don't get bound up with all that interconnectedness. Sure, I mean, there's going to be certain systems that, that rely on that interconnectedness, but allows you to think of product life cycles in much smaller bite-sized chunks. So APIs are distributed by nature. They, they encourage the use of external contractors. They support ever-growing remote workforce, support different geographic regions, and it really will empower you to, to, to scale at a global level. And I think that's, that's one of the successes of, of APIs because they're built on HTTP. HTTP is already web scale. It's already out there. It's already the World Wide Web. So building web APIs and, and on them, it just makes sense. It's going to transform IT as we know it already is. It's reducing IT bottlenecks. It's democratizing business resources. I mean, how many people in their companies have, have encountered IT stonewalling you on some initiative, something because he didn't like you or she didn't like you or you know, just some kind of BS reason? So it's really going to open up resources to everyone to own it. It's going to make priority IT projects more successful because they're not going to be bogged down with all the, all the other nickel and dime stuff. And it's going to allow third parties to handle that overflow for IT. So if a marketing or business department needs something, they don't have to go through IT for all of it. They can go to third party resources. Very valuable. So examples of internal API success. Amazon is my favorite one. So they're the early pioneer with web APIs in 2002. They provided e-commerce to web storefronts. And they saw the power of that in building their affiliate network with APIs and grew a network of a thousand affiliates, saw the potential of web APIs early on, but this really isn't internal APIs, this is external APIs. But Jeff Bezos issued a mandate 2003-2004. All departments were, in, were to interact through web services. If you needed data for marketing, it had to come through an API. If you needed to procure server capacities from IT, it came through an API. All who didn't comply would be fired. Have a nice day. So that was the birth of Amazon Web Services in the cloud. On-demand storage in 2006 with a web API. When I first started using Amazon S3, it was just, it was just command line and web API. There was no dashboard. There was no nothing. We had, I built it into all my applications as a core storage. On-demand compute in 2008, web API only. Self-service access to resources, independent little modular resources, storage, compute, database, DNS, the list goes on and on now. All individual little resources that are infinitely scalable in the cloud. Pay as you go, only for what you use. Again, decoupling resources, but from a monetary aspect. Radically shifting computing in the internet as we know it. Transforming Amazon internally transforming online commerce, transforming computing, and business. Think about what runs on Amazon. What was the last time they went out? How many sites were down last time Amazon went out? They've transformed things. So this is all due to internal API. And it's not just because Amazon you know, 
deployed internal APIs that Amazon Web Services was born out of. It's the culture. It was, it was an internal initiative. It changed how they saw. So they got the support for Amazon Web Services. So it's not just about the technology. It's about the cultural change that internal APIs uh, create. So Netflix. Looking to change the movie and television industry. They need to be agile and scale. Reach developers to help define the next generation of movies and television. And they saw, again, saw the potential of web APIs early on. And they went with the whole thousand flowers will bloom methodology. You know, uh, they launched their APIs publicly and said, hey, developers will come, they'll build things, a thousand flowers will bloom, we'll have all these cool new apps, all this amazing stuff will happen. It'll be magical, just like evangelists like me are always selling. It worked the opposite way, though. They discovered the potential of internal APIs and decoupling their internal resources and breaking them up into smaller chunks, work, you know, breaking up their teams. And now their open APIs is just 0.05% of their overall usage per the chart there. So all the rest of the APIs is actually used by their partners, all the devices that they serve. And it allowed them to you know, decouple their business operations allowed them to move from their operations in the data center and move to the cloud and scale piece by piece, moving it from the data center into the cloud. And it allows them to support over 700 different devices now because of that. They're able to have teams that own individual products and have APIs that serve individual devices. It allowed them to expand internationally, go to Europe, Asia, South America, now that they're in the cloud and all these parts and pieces are individually defined, they're able to scale that and go different places in the globe. And, and because of the underlying Amazon infrastructure as well, it's not just Netflix's own API infrastructure, it's built on Amazon's API infrastructure. So they're evolving how we engage with entertainment on televisions, on computers, mobile phones, game consoles, in our cars. If you look at that list of, of devices that uh, Netflix supports, it's pretty impressive. The TVs, the, you know, they're talking about refrigerator televisions, stuff like that. It's pretty impressive what they're able to deliver. So how can APIs transform how your company operates? Well, it can promote innovation. It can democratize the company assets. It's going to allow teams to be more nimble, accelerate product development, connect remote teams around the globe. And internalizing APIs are the key to the success of your API strategy. Internalized APIs is part of your company DNA. It's not just technology. Change the culture of your company to be API-centric. The number one reason a public API will fail is because the lack of internal support. Can't tell you how many times my budget's been cut because I didn't evangelize internally, I didn't educate and get the following that I needed internally. I've lost more projects to that. And you, it, you can't just like sell people on the, the report, you can't just sit and tell people externally what's going on. They actually have to participate in it. It's a participatory thing. So inter launching internal APIs and letting departments use it, see the value of it, is really what this is about. So if you start internally, you can adopt an API-centric approach to business. You can cultivate internal support you need. You can find success with partner implementations. And you can find success with public imp implementations. So this will all prepare your company for the API economy. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, so open for API for me. So you're going to see this a lot. And, you know, open for me is one, starts with the, the traditional terms around self-service, publicly accessible. But really open at its essence is about legal. It's about data, data retention, data storage, and really how much you're willing to open up the kimono for your company. You know, it's like how much you're going to let developers in and actually be part of your business. 
I see a lot of companies open up open APIs and, and don't at all let developers in. It's a much, it's a us and them kind of thing. So really open is multiple layers. It's not just about the technologies and using open protocols or open source or having an open public API. It's the, the legal aspect of it and really bringing developers in and being part of your business model is, is what's truly open in my mind. Yeah, I agree. I actually. And then what, what the success behind and why uh, the, the classical way of exposing the, the data set or application is mm -hmm. less powerful than exposing to an API? What, what, what it looks like in terms of evangelization? Because I, I have this in my company. But the example, uh, if I don't give examples, all that uh, price thing is big. Well, Mike from Layer 7 and I were just talking. He, he was just saying, I, I see Netflix and Amazon in everyone's talk. What did you see in my talk? It's because we don't have enough stories. It's because so many companies are closed about how they talk about their API initiatives, both internal or external. And that's what I feel my role is in the space, is to tell the stories. So I need companies to come to me and share their stories with me, share those actual examples so I can tell more stories getting tired of talking about Amazon and Netflix. And I, I mean, I love them, don't get me wrong, they're amazing examples. But Zappos is doing internal hackathons. There's a lot of other examples, but I need those concrete examples. I agree that I need, I need the full life cycle too. Like, what are the politics that went into planning this API? What kind of budgets went into it? What kind of technology? Okay, where did we fail when we launched it? All the way to, okay, here's the success. Sh and show that whole supply chain with the technology components, with the business, the budgetary. I need more of those examples. I, I, I'm short on them. Uh, when, if ever, does it make sense not to actually open an API in the I, And that's kind of the moral of this story. I, I, I'm trying to, you know, and actually this story is, is, is pushed from my friend Daniel at Netflix. They're having the hardest time with their open API because they, they're so busy and successful with their internal API, the public one and open was really a mistake. And, but it still has 18,000 developers that are pretty loud and they're having a hard time shutting it down so they have to keep it open. And um, so I would say, you know, I, per their, their story, I would say 90% of the time it makes sense to not do an open API. Always do an internal one first, then do partners, then go public because you'll have the internal teams, you'll have everyone kind of uh, you know well versed in what needs to happen. And API evangelism for me, I've been doing this for two years, and I used to advocate for hiring a person that was an evangelist. And I'm shifting to no, you shouldn't put all your hopes and dreams into one person. Everybody should learn evangelism in a company. And so doing internal APIs is the safest way. So I would say 90% of the time, companies should start with internal APIs. You should not look at open API just because of all that sexiness. How do I? Uh, well, my talk this morning had a, had a section about API evangelism, which I actually glossed over because I ran out of time. But you know, there's a whole lot of building blocks going into how you evangelize your APIs. And a lot of them work internally as well as externally. But really, the core one is storytelling. So for me, is, is telling the story around your API. And using your API, and kind of what you were saying, is, is find these, these little projects that you can do start to finish, find a success, and tell the story all the way through it. In an in a open and transparent way, little blog posts all the way through. At the end, wrap it up in a, in a PDF, and all of that will create SEO, code samples on GitHub, all of it that'll show the value of your API, tell the story, and that kind of cycle, that storytelling cycle, or hacker storytelling cycle, is, is key to evangelism, getting the word out, both internally and externally. Swift. Yeah, um, you know, 
there's there's a lot of hype in the space. You know, developers flip out when everyone talks about or deprecates an API. But usually the ones you hear about is when they didn't communicate at all. They just shut it down. You know, like Face.com, you know, when Facebook acquired them. It's like there's miscommunication. Someone says, oh, no, we're going to keep it up. And all of a sudden it's gone the next day. And so when you hear those big flare-ups, and I think the poster boy for the best API ecosystem out there and how to screw up your API ecosystem is Twitter right now. And it's just purely because of communication. So to answer the question, I'd say it's all about communication. You're going to shut down your API. I have one post where I jokingly say, you know, APIs you know, could go away at any moment. They could be shut down tomorrow. You should never build a business off of it. And then the other half of the people are like, you're going to have to support the grandchildren of the developers now who are using your API because you'll never be able to shut it down. And it's like, no, it's actually somewhere in the middle. You should have a deprecation policy like Google. Look at Google's deprecation policy. They have, you know, six months, nine months, a year, 18 months. They, they set them and then they communicate them. Six months, you know, they're gonna, they're like, we're deprecating this. You got six months, shift off of it. So communication, and it's just that storytelling process. If you're used to communicating and telling the story along the way, I think it's gonna be natural. And I think a lot of APIs have that us and them kind of concept. And so they get really sheepish about saying something about the roadmap or deprecation. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, we're doing it and we haven't said a word. And then all of a sudden the developers are up in arms and there's pitchforks and things involved, so. Any other questions? Anybody have any internal APIs here at their company? Cool. Good to see you. All right. Thanks, guys.